So thank you so much for taking out time and uh, talking to me and ITV Gold, Amara. I will be talking to you about your upcoming series and also your South Asian heritage. Yes, <laughs> great. So it must be very exciting now that 7 July is almost here when your sci-fi series Moonhaven starts streaming on AMC. Describe your role in the series. So I play Indira Mare, who is called the Envoy, and she is the person that is facilitating the technology, the AI technology on the moon, coming back to Earth. Mm -hmm. However, the deal is that the culture on the moon, which is a very different culture, is also coming with the technology. Because the idea is that you have to have a culture to cope with the power of this very advanced AI technology. Mm -hmm. What did the pre-production and shooting require? For me, it required understanding how a politician works, how a diplomat works, how an ambassador works. Also in, on camera, how much to show of what you're really thinking for the audience. Mm -hmm. but the scene, you wouldn't be doing that. You would be playing it for real and, and, and being very convincing and charming. Um, these are the kind of qualities of a politician and a diplomat. But for the audience, yeah. you want to just reveal a little bit and choosing when, finding a moment when and where. We were very lucky to have a little bit of rehearsal. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it was, it was uh, <laughs> a really fun role to prepare. So why is this story set on the moon? Why not some other planet? Maybe give a tribute to Elon Musk in the future for discovering a planet or two, or <laughs> a planet created out of the writer's imagination, but why moon? Because it's our closest planet. And I think it makes you feel that, that this could be possible. And I think the possibility makes it feel more present to the audience. It feels like this could happen or is about to. We, we, we hear a lot about the technology being there for us to travel to the moon and, and even like stay on the moon for a few days and commercial flights going back mm -hmm. to the moon. So I think the writers didn't want to put it in, in some kind of you know, like crazy mm -hmm. made up verse. I think it wanted to feel more immediate to the audience. Mm -hmm. So I think it should people, hopefully it provokes people to think about what's happening now on earth and mm -hmm. ask, and how we're going to sustainably survive on the planet. Mm -hmm. Do you have any plans to venture on the moon? Maybe <laughs> in the future? I mean, it would be very exciting to prepare to travel, do the preparation and get fit and mm -hmm. understand the science. And, 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 and I think, you know, basically aerospace engineering would be very exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be really cool to study, learn and train for piloting. Mm -hmm. But um, obviously not. <laughs> I'm not no actually very happy here on Earth and I <laughs> feel the need to pollute the moon with our mm. poison. But I do feel very worried about humanity. Really. Mm -hmm. So when you read the script, did it fill you with awe or scepticism like the character played by Bella Sway? Do you believe 100 years from now Earth would be on the verge of extinction? Yes, I think that, that, I mean, already on our planet, we are suffering all kinds of crises. I feel like we are suffering almost existential crises. Mm -hmm. there, there is a lack of political vision. So actually that's more scary, but we are also facing an existential threat of running out of resources and, um, you know, basic things like mm -hmm. clean water, clean air. Mm -hmm. So very immediate and it's very, very worrying to me. Um, when I read the script, I thought that the script was very clever because I think it would have been boring if it provided a utopia that really worked and was perfect. And I think it is a flawed utopia mm -hmm. centered in the script and the story. And I mm -hmm. think that there, there, there are compromises, mm -hmm. advancements, but there's compromises. And I'm actually talking about the culture, not necessarily the technology. Mm -hmm. So that, that makes, again, your brain, it makes you think like, what are we going to sacrifice for what? 
these are the kind of grown up complex questions we need to have rather than a black and white hmm. system is better than this system. You know, it's, it's, it's more complicated. Mm -hmm. Got that. So I also want to talk about the Darjeeling Limited. I believe that was your first major film where you worked my, with the Wes Anderson. Yes, what it was my, that like. Well, it, it was very daunting because I'd just come out of drama school and I didn't know what to expect, but it was amazing. It was like a film school. I was working with mm. incredible talent and um, I was very, very lucky to have my sort of scene partner, my main scene partner as Jason Schwartzman, because he is an exceptional artist, mm -hmm. really. And um, he was, I'm just, I just look back and I'm always so proud and it just stands the test of time. Mm -hmm. um, and that's obviously due to the wonderful script and the role and the directing and all the, all the talent, but also Jason Schwartzman. Mm -hmm. well. Was it um, your first trip to India? You, you've done roles where you portray Indian characters a lot. How easy or challenging is that for you since you, you know, your parents are from Sri Lanka? I feel like um, I, there is a lot of culturally from the Indian diaspora to draw on in terms of preparation. Also, I have many friends who are from India. Mm -hmm. and, um, culturally, it's not a giant leap. Mm -hmm. You know, they're very similar cultures. Um, I was raised Hindu. So, you know, it, mm -hmm. there's so many things that are similar interculturally. Um, also, I have sort of tended to play people who are living in the West mm -hmm. more than actually being someone born and raised in India, living in India now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I have my niche. Okay. But you have a lot of Indian fans and uh, uh, they would love to hear about your favorite Indian film, your favorite Indian actor and your last word um, to your fans about your film. Well, I, I obviously love um, Satyajit Ray, who um, Wes introduced me to. And he's obviously a Bengali filmmaker, so he's not actually Indian, but he's from the Indian diaspora. He, okay. He's an Indian. <laughs> okay, great. Um, I love the Upu trilogy and I just think there is amazing art house Indian film being made and that's what I love. Um, that, that, that would be my, the, the area that I'd love to explore going forwards and I'd love to work with Indian filmmakers. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I think that, you know, from the religious point of view to culturally, the storytelling has been so rich in India. The, the, the visual content that you get from the country, the, the clothes, the food, the smells, everything. Mm -hmm. It's intoxicating. Mm -hmm. So um, I love you back to all my Indian fans. Thank and you so much. You're intoxicating. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. And any last word for your fans who would be watching Moonhaven? Um, Gosh, um, well, thank you for your support. And I, I'm glad you're enjoying the show. And I'm glad that um, I can tell you that it was so fun to make and that actually the culture on set was authentic and not hypocritical in terms of the fact that, you know, we were talking about a haven and a new culture. And I feel like the way we worked together on set, there were lots of people from all over the world and we were shooting in Ireland. So it felt very international, but it felt very exciting because there was something genuine happening on set, which built a chemistry. And I think that transcended boundaries and borders and it made, I hope that that's the thing you enjoy, that the show is very relatable. Yes, got that. So thank you so much for talking to us and wishing you all the best for Moonhaven and all your future works.